nothing wrong with us celebrating and getting together and having a good time. Uh, you know, uh, it's because I would rather see us celebrating each other. I know that's right. Then, you know, I, I want to see us fall back in love together. So if it takes Juneteenth for us to fall back in love with each other, hey, you know, I'm happy. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about us uh, celebrating, but ha coming up with a plan mm -hmm. <laughs> after we get through celebrating and party, what are we going to do next? Our people have been taught that it's a, it's some kind of barbaric, demonic thing just to reverence your ancestors, but you do everybody's el everybody else, every other people's ancestors on a daily basis, whether you realize it or not. And so it, it, anything dealing with us, with our, with, with our, our sacred uh, uh, spiritual systems, you know, and that, that's from Africa to the Kojic church, to the Pentecostal church, to the holiness church, uh, you should at some point reconnect to the, remem the memory of, of your ancestors. We got the cure, we got the answer to what's happening in society. We got the power to solutions and provide the healing that you need. We got the cure, we got the answer with discussions that will set you free. This is the Ark Republic and you're listening to The Remedy, The Remedy, The Remedy. This right now day is very interesting because you have Father's Day and you have Juneteenth being celebrated today. So who would have thunk it that yeah. uh, a year after uh, Juneteenth was named federal holiday that we would have these two um, on there? Is there any connection between any of them that you see? To me, it's all about celebration. Mm -hmm. It's the celebration, uh, uh, it's the culmination of celebration rolling right in the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. You know, Juneteenth and Father's Day uh, being put on the 19th. You know, I'm not a numerologist, but numerically uh, that is one. That is the number one, the beginning of something. And the summer solstice is also like a, a new beginning also. You're getting ready to get a new fresh start. But uh, when I look at Juneteenth and Father's Day, especially Juneteenth, uh, it is a day that, a day of emancipation, a, a new fresh start, a new day of freedom, a new day of moving forward. And unfortunately, uh, this is the, the thing that kind of bothers me is how it's been monetized or taking the value away. But, you know, living in America with capitalism, you, you got to expect that sooner than later. Uh, I just hate that we don't monetize our culture or control our culture in a sense. I, and I know you expect me to go that way. but No, I was thinking about Juneteenth ice cream with Walmart. Yep. You know, currently there's this trademark lawsuit where this white company wants to trademark, sorry, copyright the name Juneteenth. Uh, and then there is this, um, it's being challenged by uh, a brother who has something called like Juneteenth Jubilee or Juneteenth syrup or something like that. But the idea of just thinking that you can take something and, and um, one, I mean, monetize something, because there's a lot of, there's a lot attached to what Juneteenth it really was and is, yeah. but thinking and just having the audacity just to do that just shows that um, everything is for sale in America, but specifically you're taking something out of slavery where, where black people work, work for free in order to create the capitalistic system of America to turn around and take the celebration of, of being emancipated to then make money off it. This legacy. So should, is, should, we should we really be surprised, Kaya? No, because it's, it, yeah, it's, not a, it's not a surprise. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not a surprise. Because I say everything is for sale yeah. in America. Everything yeah. is for sale in America. What is for me disheartening is yeah. we don't protect it. Do is there is is the Holocaust copy written? Is that that you know yeah. is Jewish Holocaust copy? Oh my goodness, they would come for their heads. People know that, right? So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is, but that's the disheartening part. Is is that it's only a conversation, and people kind of like just shake their head, like oh yeah, mm. 
you know, so. But, you know, it goes to show uh, how lucrative your culture is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, your food, your dress, your song, your dance, uh, your spirituality. Uh, so, and I think, unfortunately, do we recognize that as a people? Uh, no, that's the disheartening part. Yeah, yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the richness of really who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and it's almost like somebody else will come and take something from us, go over and, and dress it up, put a little little color on it, and then sell it to us like it's something new. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, some of us fall victim to the okie doke, and we think it is something new, but it speaks to our rich culture and rich heritage, uh, mm -hmm. just the richness of us as a people. And do we have to get to the point where we recognize that and want to do something with it, protect it. Right, but but there to me is a pervasive, there's a pervasive, how do I want to say this, knowledge or expectation or idea that anything a Black person creates, the norm is to pilfer it and to monetize it. it even though it's not shocking, it's very disturbing. Um, you know, and so, I mean, even in, I, I was in conversation with farmers and, you know, one of the convers in that conversation, because we was talking about how do you market yourself, you know, I had to tell them, you know, be very mindful of how you market yourself on social media, because the cash cow, the currency, the cultural currency is any type of black affect or black performance is reappropriated or whatever is taken and it's 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 rolled into these, you know, multiple different uh, posts and um, the energy changes, it shifts, uh, and you have no control over, over the narrative. It becomes something else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we have to get to the point of, uh, of forming some type of cooperative, mm -hmm. even in our, our spirituality. I, I look at, you know, African spirituality, I, you know, I, those type of things where you, you, you get pictures of, all pe people dressed in white and ain't a person of color nowhere in the group. And to mm -hmm. me, that, that, that that's amazing. You're talking about indigenous spiritual system sciences. I'm not saying nobody else should participate or learn or, or be a part of it. I'm just saying sometimes it's it's uh that, that's a funny looking picture to me. You know, look, I have I have walked into so-called West African Yoruba um, um, celebrations. And the people who are leading look nothing even remotely close to the Yoruba people. And I just walk in and I bleep, turn around and I walk out. <laughs> but from what I understand, you know, uh, Rolanda, who's been in a conversation with us, who lives in New Orleans, she said that the main voodoo store uh, in um, New Orleans is ran by a white woman. Mm. Um, so, you know, um, you know, there is, there, there, there um, that's I know that I, we're, we're deviating a little bit from it but Juneteenth in my opinion is a very it should be considered a sacred holiday right does it is, is, is Christmas copy uh, is there a copyright on Christmas it is a sacred holiday because it is the point in which um, and this is my opinion it is the point in which well once several things it shows just how nefarious and disgusting Texas leadership was in order to hold or yeah. uh, you know the slave system for, for, for two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I would say, and this is why a lot of people in California celebrated because best believe those two years that they were holding it, a lot of these slave owners were going to California and you know, trying to keep that you know, mill train mill ticket going, but that's a, another conversation yeah. as well. So it, 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 it talks about that, but it also is this notion, in my opinion, that, you know, being, being from that lineage, this idea that if everyone is not free, nobody is free. Um, mm -hmm. And on top of that, this is on the backs of a very savage system that people survive, right? So that's the celebration of it, but it's also a time where, we can use to intentionally reinsert our ancestors, our ancestor stories in our ancestors' presence. Yeah. You know, instead of like last year, 
I, I live on the East Coast. You know, I live on the East Coast. Majority of the people on the East Coast who never celebrated Juneteenth, because this is totally like a Texas, Louisiana, going, moving west to the West, West migrants a lot, you know, we're like, Ugh, what's Juneteenth? I don't understand it. No, that's not reparations. Or, da, da, da. We're bashing it. Now you have Juneteenth brunches. You have Juneteenth twerk sessions. You have yeah. Juneteenth this and yeah. this and that. And I mean, while while it is, I'm, I'm glad that people are embracing it. It still is from a, a, a point of view where the, the monetization uh, part, you know, even from us and not really understanding how really we could flip this on his head and really it be a day of ancestral observance. They, yeah. They, you know, when I think about the holiday, my ideal, if I was to set up a program, you know, it, it, it's, our, it's our basic system. It's ancestral, it's dealing with the elders, and then it's dealing with the community. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. should be something where, you know, we start off and, you know, you still, you still can do your barbecue and, you know, you still can mm -hmm. do your, play your dominoes. But at this moment, opening up, we need to pour libation. Mm -hmm. We need to thank our ancestors for their experiences. Because all along, you got your children there and you're teaching them. You're, you, it's about memory. It's about the connection. And then we need to celebrate those elders that are among us. And, you know, with all of that, having that intention when you go to this, it's, it becomes a powerful ritual. Because whether you want to believe it or not, you know, whether you want to go to church the next day or, or whatever, you went to church that morning, you are participating in a ritual. Mm -hmm. And the ritual and it, how you do the ritual affects you. And some of us are just, we just there drinking, we taking in spirits, we, 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 we having conversations. Because when a group of people gather, whatever is in the consciousness, the mindset, that's the thing you manifest. So just think if we were coming together to say, okay, because it's lined up with the summer solstice, it's a new beginning. You're looking, you're looking back and reassessing and reaffirming. You can reassess what you did the last past six months. We're going to come together as a community. This is what we're going to do. Uh, it could be something small. We're we going we gonna to take care of the elders here that we are before. We're going to look at what our ancestral energy did for this community, for this state for our family and then use it as a blueprint. So uh, we don't realize that we participating in a big ritual. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. I was uh, um, talking, I was in a talk yesterday and before my talk went on, I was talking about black farmers and reparations. The whole talk conversation was on reparations. There were two psychologists before me, I forgot their names, but um, the title of their talk, and I think maybe a um, something they wrote was called something like turning ghosts into ancestors. Mm. And it was really, you know, a, you know, profound title in uh, getting people to think about reparations being connected to real people. Um, mm. But because it being connected, because so it's like this TikTok and this reappropriation of stuff. When you don't see something as having humanistic value, you will do things like totally gut whatever the, 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 the cultural, spiritual aspects of it and then say, oh, yeah, this is mine or then use it uh, and, and, and feel like you could do it over and over again without any comp uh, compensation. I was at the Odunde Festival in Philly. And, you know, this this is the, um, the Yoruba celebration of New Year and they make a a, um, uh, what is this, um, an offering to Oshun in the, in, um, in the river. And there was the a, um, a journalist. And so I was doing my offering and I had a bell and a journalist was taping it and I was stopped. And I was like, who are you? I was, oh, well, I'm da da da. And I got permission. I said, well, you didn't get my permission. Be gone. You know what I'm saying? So there is such a reverence, <laughs> you know, towards it, but we are participating ritual, but turning goes to ancestors, we must do now that that's what we must be about. We must take these, because a lot of people think that Harriet Tubman was fictional. Like, mm. <laughs> that, you've, heard, you've been hearing that, right? That's the craziest thing to me. You know, I'm like, huh? 
you yeah. know, so, 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 and, and, and that is what is happening when you co-opt and commercialize, you know, events as such, you know, um, as this. So we have to do the work of actually, you know, saying the word ancestor as being something that is, because, you know, America has its ancestors, it has its heroes, it has its war heroes, it has its statues, it has a whole history, blah, blah, blah. But we need to be about doing that work. I, I'm, I know I'm kind of st starting and stopping because no, a lot of thoughts are going in my head. Well, you know, you, you, you're on point. Um, and and that, that's confirmation for me that we're working on a class on teaching. You know, unfortunately, our people have been taught that it's a it's some kind of barbaric, demonic thing just to reverence your ancestors, but you do everybody's el everybody else, every other people's ancestors on a daily basis, whether you realize it or not. And so it, it, anything dealing with us, with our, with, with our, our sacred uh, uh, spiritual systems, you know, and that, that's from Africa to in the Kojic church, to the Pentecostal church, to the holiness church, uh, you should at some point reconnect to the, remem the memory of, of your ancestors. Let me give you this story. It's in Joshua, the third chapter. And this is for all my, my, my Christian brothers and sisters, where they took 12 stones when they crossed the Jordan River and they put it there and they made a little memorial, a statue. And, he, and they asked, he made the statement. When our children get to the point to ask us what this means, we'll be able to remember to tell them the story. And so all of these things like Juneteenth should be something geared toward setting the memorial down to remind our children about what's happening. It would be beautiful if we go into our churches this weekend and we have Juneteenth celebration where we, we recognize our ancestors, what they did. See, when we talk about ancestral mem remembrance, veneration, whatever, it can be the smallest thing that have the greatest punch. Mm. You know, just, just calling out their names and telling their story, what it does is it brings back the memory. It, it, it reconnects the memory. Just tell their story. You ain't got to get into doing a whole bunch of libation, drumming, but just mm -hmm. tell their story. And that, is, and that is the most powerful spiritual experience you can do for yourself and for your children. Just, just tell the story. Mm. I got to chill. <laughs> I have a chill on that because that, you know, part of me talking about Black farmers, I always start with my personal story. And it was only yesterday that I realized how important the story was. I mean, I knew that story was important, but I realized like all of me said, oh, this is like this story is so central in a part of Louisiana history and also in um, you know, criminal, when we talk about social justice and, and, and the justice, what do you call this, justice department, uh, you know, so I, I just started because, as you know, a lot of our stories are oral histories, one, and if you come from a migratory family that had to leave or flee because of white domestic terrorism, you only get bits of the story because often somebody was killed, somebody did the killing, somebody mm -hmm. still might be alive, right? Um, and so I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, just talking about uh, talking about my history, just, you know, very briefly. Um, there's a book called The Execution of Willie Francis by Gilbert King. It tells of a 17 year old boy who was um, arrested for supposedly killing, I think, like a white woman uh, was uh, sentenced to death by electric uh, electric chair. And when it happened, I think something faulty happened and he did not die. And so there was another trial to see if he should be executed again. Well, the lawyer for the defense, for his defense, used a case uh, in uh, a, 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 what they would call like a seminal case or a, um, a historical case and for his defense. That uh, case was my great, was it great grandfather? who was the first black man to be acquitted for killing a white man in the state of Louisiana. And so it was self-defense. Um, and, 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 and it was because this white man was trying to force 
my great, so was it great, great or great, great, my grandmother's father. Okay. Is that great, great or great? I don't know. Are we old? Okay, but anyway, my grandmother's father. <laughs> okay, okay. To give up his land, you okay. know, and, and so the trial and everything like that, um, you know, was, 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 a huge thing in the area. My, my grandmother was um, from St. Martinville, Louisiana. He was found, when he was found innocent, they had to hide him for months and then sneak him out in the middle of the night where he went to Houston, your, your whereabouts. Mm. Um, and so, but there was so much, um, the family that he left back in St. Martinville, my mother, her sisters received so much hell um, that he came back 10 years later and less than a week, his body parts were found on the train tracks uh, in St. Martinville. But when I was telling the story, I didn't realize how that story was so important when we talk about black farmers, the still of land, when we talk about the criminal justice system, but also when we talk about lineage um, and understanding lineage and how, because Furnish Jones's name has been left out of the books, when you talked about how we, we call on other people's ancestors daily and we don't even know, we also invoke their lineages too, as well, to, to live long and to be in our consciousness and psyche, whether we, we, we know it or not. So, I mean, we're talking about, you know, even design, designers, buildings, streets, so on and so forth. So that made me think of that. Uh, and it's important. I know this sounds kind of somber, but I, I, I and I love, let me, if, if anybody knows me, you know, I love a good turn up. Okay. Let me tell you parties we give um, are um, importante, right? But um, I, I just wanted to kind of add this ca caveat because I don't want us to, I want people to know that there are people who have not lost this core part of what Juneteenth is supposed to mean, right? And to, 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 in, Mm -hmm. I want to take that another direction. Think about the trauma that the family experienced when he had they had to hide him mm. when he went away for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Think about all of, all of that trauma that's built up and why, you, you know what I'm saying? When we really mm -hmm. dig into that mm -hmm. to try to heal that and, and to try to uh, um, uh, try to do some type of healing with that. You know, and how does that show itself today in you, in your children, you know, in, in your in your sisters and, and that type of thing? So, um, you know, and let me say this, um, uh, Baba Todd, that trauma you talk about stayed with my grandmother until she left this earth, because there were two stories that she it was like, oh, sorry, <laughs> grandma, I hear you. <laughs> it was two stories she had on repeat before she lost her full command of speaking English because my grandmother's first language was Creole, Louisiana Creole, not Haitian Creole, but Louisiana Creole. And um, uh, it was the story of her father and also how she beat the hell up out of some white kid on the road going to school. But um, um, she lost her daddy. That changed the dynamics of the family it changed the trajectory, definitely all of the women in that family, because she had like four or five sisters, maybe more. I don't, I don't even know. I, that's a shame. I don't know my whole family layout. And it also left them very vulnerable in a very hostile climate. But at the same time, it activated my grandmother. It was only in death that we find out she secretly had a, um, she was a card carrying member of the NAACP, one of the few, you know, early uh, in, in the NAACP did, would not have even known that, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that, that what you're talking about. So, so it, it holds, and I know it passed down to my mom, which then ultimately passed down to me. So we talk about the trauma, but I also need to talk about this other part, you know, like that part that activates you. And so here I am sitting here talking to you with, with what I'm saying, right? Yeah. 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 I don't want to say like it's a blessing because it's not, but it did motivate some things within you, trigger some things within you to get to to build to get you where you are right now. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But, you know, I, I, I think about your story. When I hear your story, just think about the thousands and thousands of Black people. I got at least two stories of a relative uh, having to leave to go to Chicago, you know, to go to North because uh, they know by morning he would be dead. So, you know, the, the trauma of, of running to save your life and then the trauma of that mother who got to see their child go off uh, just to leave and then what they got to face on a continuous basis. And the whole thing has been about the land, you know, uh, and that's another story. These courthouses burning down in the South and all of that, that was about uh, uh, trying to protect land. You know, many stories of Black folks having a thousand acres. Now, all of a sudden, they only got 400 acres. Mm -hmm. What happened to the 600? Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the records in the courthouse, the courthouse is burned down, uh, wow. <laughs> which would has the records. So now uh, there's that's no what's trace. Going on right now? Well, you know, in the past. On oh, the, the past. Okay, okay. You know, okay. In the past. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that was a situation, uh, especially for those that people have taken over a whole county. So yeah, farming, land, uh, even the, the suit uh with, with the USDA about, you know, about that, uh supporting black farmers, not giving them if they gave white farmers uh, uh benefits, the black farmers didn't get them, you know. But that's that's the story of America. Mm -hmm. Uh that's the story mm -hmm. of the South, that's the story of our people. Mm -hmm. But I think the beautiful part of that is our resilience, mm -hmm. how we still uh, held this thing together and was able to, uh, you know, to, to, to leave our children, our families, our community with something. So, you know, but that's the thing on this Juneteenth we need to be celebrating is the resilience of, of those that came before us, those elders. And when I say elders, I, just because you old, you ain't no elder. Just because you 65, you know, that's you, just because you 70, don't you I don't put you in the elder. Your actions speak to me as you being an elder. Mm -hmm. So those that have done something for the community, the family, that have has sustained us, kept us, benefited us, they should be celebrated as as, as our elders, those that are among us. Right. And if you haven't done shit, you ain't nothing but a senior citizen. There, there you go. <laughs> That's what I say. You're, just, you're not you, <laughs> just collecting social security. Yeah, you just a social security collector. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean this is this is but but you know, but but to let me just say this, let me emphasize this. I'm happy people are celebrating, right? Yeah. I'm I am happy, I am I am grateful and I am full of joy that especially after everything that has happened, people are marking a day to be in. A cel cel what is it? Cel I can't even say the word. Celebr celebratory. Yeah, a celebratory. Cel I can't even say yeah, the word. Yeah. Mood. You yeah. know, I'm, 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 we need that. We need that energy um, in order to counteract a lot of the like morose and the grief and, you know, that. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And, and to be fair, this is a baby. This is a baby holiday. And yeah. I know it will evolve. It's just maintaining that aspect that we all must all must be mindful of. And if you know anything about, you know, African people and even just like indigenous culture, um, everything is, you know, we understand things are a yin and a yang, right? So you might have the 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 portion where you're doing the the libation or you're you're calling out ancestors and you're thinking of those struggles. You know, five minutes later, somebody drunk, somebody turning it up. And that's just how, because that's life, right? That is yeah, the end yeah. of the flow, right? So last thoughts on Juneteenth, Baba Todd. Hey, man, go out and enjoy it. I, I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to run out of here when we get through. I'm going to go enjoy some Juneteenth. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, let, you know what? Let me, let me hurry up with this conversation. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it's time. It's, it, it's, it's late on, but you know. It's nothing wrong with us celebrating and getting together and having a good time. Uh, you know, uh, it's because I would rather see us celebrate each other. I know that's right. That, you know, I, I want to see us fall back in love together. So if it takes Juneteenth for us to fall back in love with each other, hey, you know, I'm happy. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about us uh, celebrating, but ha coming up with a plan. Mm -hmm. After we get through celebrating and party, what are we going what are we gonna do next? Yeah, I like that. Uh, we do need to fall back in love with each other. 
you know, what, whatever that looks like. I, I like that. I, I, I'm, I'm going to embrace that. That's going to be probably my Juneteenth mantra for the next hundred yeah. and million Juneteenth, however long I'm on this earth. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. All right. So uh, turn up for me. Uh, blaze one for the nation. 